Hello and welcome to the Theodore Roosevelt Show. I'm Petty Officer Petrosino and thank you for turning in. Recently, USS Theodore Roosevelt underwent an inspection called InServe. Don't know what that is? That's okay, I hardly do myself. But lucky for us both, we have footage of it in our first clip of the show coming up next. I'm Brian Peters and I am the ComNav AirPAC InServe Coordinator. My job is to work with the Type Commander, both Type Commanders, in the scheduling of InServe for all the aircraft carriers. One of the major facets of habitability is essentially the environment that the crew lives in on a daily basis. So you have to get the crew to understand it is the ship. That's what InServe is inspecting. InServe doesn't inspect you. They don't inspect training. They don't address operations. But they will ding you if you're not doing it right. InServe inspects everything. They'll do all the flow coats. If you notice, when they first came on board, there were the ship has an allowance of almost 4,000 rubber ducky abandoned ship life vest available for the crew. They look at the conveyors, the ability to move stuff up and down, transfer logistics materials throughout the ship safely and effectively. Okay? They looked at all the weapons elevators, they looked at the hangar bay itself, how it's, there are special labeling procedures for the hangar bay to enable actuation of systems and to enable firefighting capability. I can tell you today you know, the joy for me, the thrill in me is watching the pride, the professionalism, the integrity of the crew come together with an understanding, you know, answer the question. I can answer the question when I go walk off the brow today, do they get it? And I can tell you, Theodore Roosevelt got it. You know, every day a sailor comes up to me and says, Petty Officer Petrosino, when can we ride trikes up and down the hangar bay? And I tell him, no, that's not possible. But CSAD said yes. In a recent underway, we actually had CSAD put on a demonstration and the effects of drunk driving here in the hangar bay. Coming up next, check it out. Today on board we had our CSAD DUI simulator. Uh, we had representatives come out, you know, help sailors on board understand the cause and effects of drunk driving. What uh, the sailors on board would do, they'd get on a tricycle, put on their beer goggles, and try to drive. One station was set up opposite directions, and it showed how you would be driving with someone else on the road while you were impaired. Another station, we had our blacked out goggles, which were .24, and you would drive in a straight line, on that straight line course, there's a stop sign. If you didn't stop at the stop sign in time, one of our CSAD representatives, they'd pull you over and ask you to do a sobriety test. Basically, you would walk in a straight line, heel to toe, with your finger on your nose, like such. If that didn't work, you failed. Other than that, we had a station where you have the goggles on and you try to find your loose items, such as your keys, your phone, a shoe. I don't know, some people take off their shoes when they go out. The blackout drunk one where you stop, the goggles. The goggles were just insane. It was like 
you put them on and you felt drunk. You still could be sober and you, you just feel drunk, so just, just putting them on was hard. We had a few times where on the two-man course, we asked people to pull out their cell phones and text and drive. You know, sometimes when people are drunk, they choose to text as well as drink and drive. So it's beneficial to show the causes and effects of that to everyone, not just E1, E2, E3, E4, not just, you know, enlisted, but also the officers. You know, a few of them came out, the XO came out, showed well, but it goes to show that at any rank, you can understand the causes and effects of drunk driving. The, the amount of failure you see out here, it's real, it's real life, so it should affect people in a good way, like not to do it, because this little fun event, real life in a car, can really hurt somebody. Recently, we were fortunate enough to hang out with some awesome folks from the Wounded Warrior Project who are doing some amazing things. Oh, you don't believe me? Check this out. Wounded Warrior Games gives me a, another shot to really express myself to the world that I'm still here. And I still have a voice, and even though I'm broken on the outside, me on the inside, I'm still here, I'm still fighting it, and I still have that fire to just keep driving on and just keep living and really show what I'm made of. It's a freedom. It's a freedom of being who you are. Finally, with friendship, newfound friendship, and and people that know what you're talking about and know how you feel and why you feel that way without even saying anything. Competing with other wounded warriors is, it feels like a big privilege. You know, I get to, get to talk with all these other guys that have injuries that are similar or completely different from mine. And just that camaraderie, just everyone's coming together and everyone is there, like, Everyone knows how to tailor to your needs. Like, I'm in a wheelchair, you know, they, they help me out plenty of times if I need help. Others, you know, their wounds aren't as visible, they don't need as much help getting around, but you still, you're still able to talk to each other and really get to know each other. We're, we're, we're more than just athletes, we're family here. We're here to support because we know each other and we know each other and we feel secure in each other and that is huge for a person that has PTSD, invisible, or, or that's hurt, or that has an amputation. My name's Angel Segura, and I'm a wounded warrior. My name is Mareka Temple, and I'm a wounded warrior. Hello and welcome to the Serious News. My name's MCSN Lindstrom. Inserve may be behind us, but don't drop that serious face. The Coalition of Sailors Against Destructive Decisions, or CSAD, held a Captain's Cup on Naval Station Norfolk. A hundred chapters of the Eastern Region participated, and USS Theodore Roosevelt was one of them. Definitely the best one. Ten senior chiefs were recently frogged on board Theodore Roosevelt, adding a star to their anchor. But there were always stars to us. After 35 years of service, the Chief Engineering Officer, Commander William Pollitz, has retired from the Navy. He's one of several valuable members of the Theodore Roosevelt crew to depart the ship recently. The others include the Reactor Officer, the Supply Officer, the Chaplain, the Judge, and Mo. No, not that Mo. The Maintenance Officer. Carrier Air Wing 1 came aboard USS Theodore Roosevelt recently to inspect their spaces and familiarize themselves with the ship prior to upcoming deployments. High five Air Wing 1, let me be the first one to welcome you to the ship. In World Cup news, the US national team suffered a loss to Belgium and was eliminated from the tournament. The following day, 
Members of the Belgian Defense College came aboard to rub it in. That's fine. I didn't like their waffles much anyway. Well, that does it for this episode of the Serious News. Thank you all for tuning in. My name's MCSN Lindstrom. Y'all have yourself a fine Navy day. Well, that does it for us here on the Theodore Roosevelt Show. We hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed producing it for you. Be sure to check us out on the Facebook page, USS Theodore Roosevelt, for upcoming events and things that we cover just for you. Have a good day. See you next time. I can't even do a turkey right now. Hey, how's it going? This is ABH1 Bosco V1 Air Department. I just want to give a shout out to my family back in Virginia Beach, my daughters Bianca and Ariana. I just want to say daddy loves you and uh, take care. All right, bye. Hey, how you doing? My name is ABH3 Witherspoon Air V1. I want to give a shout out to the whole TI crew and the whole Air Department. Good job out there. Uh, my name is Airman Canaryman, V3 Division. USS Theodore Roosevelt, and I'd like to shout out Germany. You're going to win the World Cup. Hi, my name is Erica Haggard. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I want to give a shout out to ABF AA Fuentes because she's getting out the Navy today. Love you. Hi, I'm MC3 Drew from Phoenix, Arizona. I want to say hi to my parents. That's <laughs>